uh, April 20th, uh, fuck, no, it's not, it's April 18th. Uh, April 18th, 2020, doesn't matter what day it is. So, uh, in terms of this first person thing, this, this, this being present thing, it's been working. It's been working really well. Uh, I'm exhausted. Mentally, I'm always exhausted, but, I, you know, that's nothing new from before. I, I, like, I have to, like, I stay very quiet all day, and I just try to focus in. I, I hope it makes sense to whoever's listening what I mean, like, visually, that first person thing, but, um, yeah, no, it seems to be working, and it's, I think, I'm thinking because of this new mental shift, I might change up not only the way I write, but I might chuck out all my old shit, which is fucking terrifying. Like, if you're a comic especially, I'm sure you can understand. Because I had, like, I could have done about 30 minutes, 30 reasonable minutes of, of stand-up um, at a bar or even at a club. I, I think I, like, I, I'm confident in that material that that was, like, Okay, that was okay material. I'm sure in five years I'll look back on some of those clips and I'll be disgusted with myself. And uh, but as of right now, where I'm at right now, that wasn't bad material. And so the idea of getting rid of it is like throwing your your baby at a dumpster, which is a thing that people do. So if people can throw their babies in dumpsters, I can throw my baby in a dumpster. <laughs> anyway. Uh, no, and, and so I, I, I think I just want to, I, I don't know, I want to wipe the slate clean. Like, the, this quarantine feels like, th- this whole thing feels like the world was moving too fast, things were getting too crazy, and it feels like, it feels like the world being like, all right, all right, everyone time out, everyone take a goddamn knee, take a knee, y'all, you're acting up, you're acting, you're rambunctious, you're, you're, you're roughhousing, you're being hoodlums, I don't know, but you, you know, you know what I'm saying, like, it feels like the world was just ramping up, not to say that it's not ramping up now, but I've disconnected so much from news that, that at this point, because it's, it not, it's not helping me, like, on a day-to-day basis, like, I listen to maybe 10, 15 minutes of news a day, just to make sure that like, oh, you know, you gotta, you have to hide in a bunker today? No, you don't have to do that? All right, I'm good. I'm straight. I'll, I'll keep doing my thing. That's kind of where I'm at with, with all this. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking about chucking all that material because my thought process at the time was, like, this is, I need to express this to people. People need to understand where I'm coming from, why I think the way I think. And... It was almost like my, my comedy was more of an expl- explanation. My comedy was was explaining things to people. And I don't know, I mean, I don't know where this is going to take me, but as of right now, I don't feel like explaining anything to people. I'm tired. Um, I'm tired and it takes too much mental energy to stay in first person. Like that, that's enough mental energy for me. And, but it's scary. Like it's really, it's really terrifying. The idea of getting rid of like 30 minutes of material and starting from scratch. But at the same time, I'm thinking like, you know, everybody, everybody's starting from scratch. As soon as we all get back and start doing comedy again, fuck that. I'm not going to take any, any book shows. I'm not going to try to be at a, at the ice house or at the improv. Fuck that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to. I need to go back. To, I need to go back to to these open mics, and I need to like work out. Like, I feel like the the this quarantine is making everyone's comedic muscles atrophy. We're all we're all becoming spindly and weak comedically because we're not getting on stage. And I look at I look at club shows or book shows as like, you know, that's that's the gun show. That's when you show off your your muscles and how much you worked out comedically and I just haven't been I haven't been at all I've been working on myself which is good and I think that's going to help but I haven't been I haven't been working out material enough to go back to a book show like if you go to a book show after this like if that's your first thing you do you're out of your goddamn mind and I think you're stupid but that's just me either way um or or I'll, (laughs) I'll rephrase that if you were at my level if you were at my level in comedy if you're, if you're fucking Joe Rogan or Dave Chappelle, do whatever the fuck you want. 
you're not gonna listen to this and you don't care about my opinion. But if you're at my level, you also probably don't listen to this or care about my opinion, but I'm giving it to you regardless because for whatever reason you are listening right now. I, I don't, there's fucking dogs everywhere. All right, yeah, so getting rid of my material. Yeah, I'm thinking of getting rid of everything. I mean, when I come back, I think I said this, when I come back, I'm going to need something when I get on stage. I might bring out some old shit or maybe tweak it to match where I'm at my mentally right now. But I'm very much considering dropping it all. I'm considering not doing a flowing narrative. Um, I like the idea, and I think... I think it's a cool style of comedy. I really do enjoy comedians that are able to take a basic concept and they, they turn it into a movie. Like they verbally talk you through a movie and it's, it's fascinating. Mike Berbiglia, Mike Berbiglia, Mike Berbiglia, um, well, was, Ari Shafir did that with Double Negative. I know a lot of British comedians. Daniel Sloss does that type of shit, like taking you through a journey. I think I think Dave Chappelle does it too, but in a in a more subtle way. Like when you watch his when you watch all of his specials over and over, as I do, because I've joined the cult of Dave Chappelle. I'm gonna start smoking Marlboro cigarettes and get needlessly buff and shave my head. Um, but he, when you watch all of his specials, they have there's a theme, there's a vibe to it, but it's not as blunt. It's not as like it. It doesn't hammer you over the head. Like if you were to listen to all of my material, or you know, I'm not gonna use myself. I'll say like Ari Shafir's um, Double Negative. If you were to watch Double Negative, you would say to yourself, "Oh, okay, this is the part where he talks about youth. This is the part where he talks about age, and everything. It just is what it is. Which is not bad. It's not a bad thing. But I like how Chappelle, when you when you listen to him. Each special it just feels different. I don't know. Maybe I should analyze that eventually, but right now, that's not what I'm focused on. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about getting rid of it because, my like, mentally, I'm just not in that same space anymore. And I think I should allow myself to change. But change in this way is so fucking scary. Like, it is really scary. The idea of just getting rid of everything, all of that work, that baby going into that dumpster and then lighting that dumpster on fire and throwing it in the riot that's inevitably going to happen. You know what else I realized? <laughs> you know what else I realized is I'm starting to realize, like, why people get upset with what I say, I think, is because my humor is not... I think I even said this to Will my, and, and Night Guy and Baldy. My humor is not dry. I don't have a British-style sense of humor. There's nothing dry. My humor is very wet. I have a very moist sense of humor. It's, it's hyperbolic. It's exaggeration. And when I, when I, like everything, everything I say and I do has this exaggerated tone about it, an exaggerated thought process, especially emotionally. Like you'll hear me rant or talk on one of the other podcasts, maybe see me get on stage and talk. If I get angry or, or especially upset or happy about things, like everything's turned up to 11. And... And people don't, people don't seem to understand, like, I'm exaggerating. And when I'm doing comedy specifically, when I look back, I think I was exaggerating for comedic effect. And I'm, I, I don't mind that. I mean, if that's me, if that's my style of humor, I'm good with that. And what I've been doing is I tell my joke, I say what it is, I hope that people understand. And then afterwards, if it seems like they don't understand, then I usually will acknowledge or I'll say, you know, all jokes aside... Or, or like, hey, you know, I'm just playing around. I try to do that. That's my new strategy. Because while thinking about myself is important, um, I th I, again, I think I said this on Night Guy and Baldy. Like, my, my progress was being younger. I had good intentions but didn't give a fuck about other people's feelings or what they thought about it, really. And then in, in college was when it changed from having good intentions to making it very clear that I had good intentions or trying to. But then that made shit awkward and weird and clunky. And so now I think I've gone kind of full circle with an added level of maturity and life experience. Having good intentions, wanting to just express my feelings, my perspectives on things, uh, and then taking other people's feelings into consideration after 
I've expressed my feelings. So I express my feelings. If it seems like something's been misinterpreted or misunderstood, then I'll elaborate on it. By the way, I know, I know it sounds like I must be incredibly out of shape because I'm always fucking huffing and puffing on this podcast. And it's just because I'm walking through this neighborhood and there's nothing but hills. That's how you know you're living in a mildly nice neighborhood when there's just hills everywhere because nobody has to walk. Everybody drives. <sighs> Anyway, um, material, and yeah, m- mentally, I'm just not in the headspace anymore. I, and I have to, I think I have to just let myself change and develop and become what, something different. And so it's scary. Uh, it's scary, but I think it's a good thing. Usually the shit that scares you is, is kind of the, the direction you want to go in. Um, there's more. Okay, that's right. What made me realize, like, maybe I need to chuck all this material is last night I was existing and this idea came to my head of how, like, I don't know what's real anymore. I don't know reality anymore. When I saw, when I saw my ex yesterday, had the dogs play or whatever, she was talking about, um... Something, I don't know, whatever the fuck is going on. Probably the coronavirus and the government. She's talking about the coronavirus and the government. And I was thinking to myself, huh, I disagree with that because I heard different information. And she was speaking confidently. Like you could have given, given her like a podium in a, in a, in a, in a pants suit. You would have thought she was just Hillary Clinton, just out there doing her thing. Um, but, but I heard all this other information. And then when you talk... To people, when you listen to Alec Damani, by the way, no offense to mind if you listen to this, I don't take any of your opinion seriously when it comes to politics or the government or what we should be doing. But when I hear him talk about it, he's like, he has all his opinions about it and is also very confident about them. And the more I talk to people and the more they all say their opinions of what's happening, everyone thinks that they're right. And I know this is, and this is why I think the pivoting is smart because this concept is something I was playing with before the quarantine, but, um, but now I have like a different, different perspective on it. Uh, and I started thinking about it. I started kind of riffing in my head on accident, not on accident, like, like it's a bad thing, but like inadvertently just kind of riffing the idea in my head. And I was like, oh, this actually has something to it. I decided not to write it down because I want to stay on this, on this focus that I have. Um, I think it's, I actually do think it's working. I think it's, um, I think it's, it is leading me closer to being a better writer and comic. So I'm going to keep, you know, focus, keep working on myself, still not worrying about comedy, but, but I I think I, I have something new here and I'm excited to see where it goes. And I'm not looking forward to, to slam dunking that baby of mine into the dumpster by its, by its head or its butt area. I'm not looking forward to that. But sometimes you got to let go of your baby. So like a moment. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, you know what's crazy to me is I know, first off, I don't think anybody listening at this very moment Whatever, by the way, I checked the analytics and it's not 20 to 30, it's about 20. So thank you to all 20 of you for listening to my bullshit. I'm pretty sure you 20 people will be fine. Whoever you guys are listening, you're listening to me for a reason. You seem to get my sense of humor. But, um, but you know, anybody stumbling over this or just finding this maybe in the future would listen to that and not get the joke not get that I'm joking or playing around and that's been my that's been my life uh is is I'm just joking or I'm playing around and or I'm exaggerating like that's a hold up all right we were walking by a cat and Aaliyah was about to fuck that cat up um yeah so my entire life has been you know the way I speak is just exaggerated it's super hyperbolic and I sound Apparently, I sound very serious when I say it, and people don't seem to get that. And what I've been working on is not worrying about it. That, that like, 
the people that are gonna like me are gonna like I have I have a one of those polarizing personalities and I just have to accept it uh, I just have one of those personalities where where like you know you're gonna love me or hate me probably um, it, it's it's funny like I'm, I'm jealous of introverts I'm so jealous of introverts because they're given or from what I, I don't know if you're an introvert and you disagree with me message me I guess but you won't but but introverts are given a lot of leeway in in many ways that like how do I put this all right all right so let's say all right let's say you had to put an introvert fuck hold on let me, I gotta work my thoughts out okay here we go if I say something inappropriate in a large group of people or what, or what it seems to be inappropriate socially people would ask you would ask me things like why would you say that why do you feel the need to say that why and it is my personality it is in my fucking blood to disrupt apparently and to to be oh, fuck all right so it's in me to be disruptive that's that's a contrarian a person that is going to say things that not everybody is willing to say or wants to say in a group of people because the, the fear of the repercussions. And I don't have the, the personality to think about those repercussions before it happens. Like it happens, and I have, again, I have the best intentions, but it, it happens, and then on the back end, shit hits the fan. And an introvert or someone who is not like me would hear that and probably think, well, just don't fucking say it, you maniac. Don't say it. And to that person, I say, okay, if you're an introvert, if you're quiet, if you're um, afraid to talk in front of people, if you're afraid to offend people, if you're anything like that, basically, if you're a pussy, <laughs> no, but like, if you're an introvert, I'm kidding. If you're an introvert, if you're an introvert, imagine I t like you're, I don't know, you're at a comedy club. And I told you, you have to get on stage and talk for five minutes and try to entertain people for five, for five minutes. You'd be, you would say, no, I cannot do that. Like that is not in your nature to do that. It's the reverse. That's, it's the, that's the feeling I have is like, I can't, I can't not say the thing. It's, 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 it's wild, man. Like I, it's weird. And I'm still in a place where I don't, if I'm being perfectly honest, I don't want to be me. Like, it is exhausting being me. It is, it is, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, no, it's tired, it's tiresome when you have the best of intentions, when, when you, when you, your natural instinct is to disrupt things, but you don't want to disrupt things because you want to hurt people. It just is. It, I, I, you know, man, maybe I don't have the words for it yet. I'm going to figure it out over time. But that's, that's where my head's at. I, I guess, I don't know, this one went all over the place. But in short, um, I'm getting there. I'm figuring out how to stay present. I think I did it a lot better in this episode. Um, I've been doing it when I, on the, the few interactions I have with other human beings. Uh, I seem to be able to click into it. And I'm not going to worry about stand-up comedy right now. I'm going to keep worrying about being able to click into this, stay focused, Stay present. That's my plan. All right. Okay.